Zoe, are you there? There's something important I need to tell you. I know your dad said I couldn't tell you this, but I think it's unfair to keep this a secret from you. Yes, I'm here. What is it that's so important, Eden? Well, it's about your dad. Seriously, I don't know where to start, but I feel like I have to tell you that your dad's health is in a very critical condition. He's in the terminal phase of a heart failure, and his condition is deteriorating at an alarming rate. I asked him to go to the hospital, but he wanted to stay home. I think he also knows that his time is running out. What? Why all of a sudden? A mere few weeks ago, when I last saw him, he seemed to be in good spirits and full of energy. How come his condition worsened so quickly? I, I just can't believe this. He was deliberately pretending to be okay so you won't have any suspicions on his condition. In reality, he was suffering from a lot of chest pain and fatigue. What a brave man. To think he would go to such length to protect you from all the possible emotional damage. I know that it's difficult to process all of this, but it's still an inevitable truth. I knew that he was dealing with heart failure for a long time now, but I didn't anticipate that this day would come so quickly. Honestly, you should have told me about my dad's condition way sooner, Eden. I really don't understand why my dad told you to keep his illness a secret from me. Zoe, you know Henry loves you more than anything in the world. He didn't want to hurt your feelings. He knew that if you learned of his illness, you would be devastated. Your dad didn't want to worry you, so he kept his health problems a secret. <laughs> How could he possibly conceal such a grave matter from me? He should know that I love him just as much as he loves me. And that keeping his condition from me won't help me cope with tragedy any better. I know. I told him the same thing. But despite how many times I tried to talk him out of his opinion, he insisted that I maintain my silence and not inform you of his illness. Well, now that you have told me about it, can I at least pay my dad a visit? Is it? I won't just sit around and do nothing while my father is fighting for his life. Zoe, I know that you want to see your father as soon as possible. However, if you were to appear at our home at this time, it would make me a traitor to his wishes. And I would never want that. You know, I gave him my words and I can't just simply break my promise with him. W what should I do now? Should I just watch as his life slowly comes to an end without doing anything? What kind of daughter would do something like that to her own father? Zoe, I know what you're going through right now. I have all the sympathy in the world for you. But don't be too worried. I'll keep you constantly informed about your dad's situation. What if I just come to his mansion without his consent? I could make it like a casual visit. Then he won't have anything to say about it. Please, Eden. I want to be with my father during this most challenging time in his life. I'm sure he would be more than happy to see his daughter. No, Zoe. I told you. You can't do that. Or else your dad would be boiling mad at me. You already know how short-tempered your dad is. And how scary he would become when he loses his composure. Especially when it's something that it has to do with you. I know that you're feeling confused and scared. But bear in mind that I'm always here for you during this difficult time. But Eden, how can I make it seem like nothing and ignore my dad, knowing that he's suffering from so much misery? Honey, I told you, I'll make sure that you don't miss any important updates on your dad's medical condition. All you need to do right now is to clear your head, pray, and hope for the best for your father. He's a tough man. Although the chances are slim, he hasn't given up on his life yet. Fine, I understand. Understand that it's impossible for me to visit my father. However, I don't want to trouble you too much about my father's condition. So can you please at least provide me with contact details of his private doctor, Mr. Davis? I just want to know more information on my father's medical prescriptions and his current condition. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Mr. Davis no longer works as your dad's private doctor anymore. He told us that he was experiencing some family difficulties and resigned shortly there after. Now, Dr. Brown is in charge of supervising your dad's health. Oh, okay. Would you be so kind as to give me Dr. Brown's phone number so I can have a word with him? Please send me as soon as possible because this is really important for me. 
Honey, you don't need to worry yourself too much with your father's treatment by contacting his private doctor. Me and Dr. Brown have everything under control. We always keep a close eye on Henry's situation and immediately interfere if anything goes wrong. I can't help but think that you're doubting my ability to take care of your father. And I feel a little offended by that. No, Eden! You're misunderstanding me. That's not what I meant at all. I believe that you have seen with your own eyes how well I have always taken care of Henry throughout the years. I undertake the daily tasks of cooking his meals, ironing and laundering his clothes, cleaning the bedroom, and ensuring that his workroom is spotless. I could ask the maids to do all the housework, but I don't want to. I think it's important for me to be a hands-on wife and take care of my husband myself. Zoe, I don't want to say this out loud, but I knew that you disliked me from the very first day I set foot in Henry's house. Is that correct? Well, I don't blame you. It's a bad reputation that stepmothers always have to bear on their shoulders. Eden, I'm sorry. It is true that I didn't have a good feeling about you marrying my dad from the start because I thought it was a hasty decision. But as I came to know you better, I came to realize that you truly love and care for my father. In fact, you were the one who strongly opposed my father's decision of forcing me to move out of his house due to certain misunderstandings between us. And I'm really grateful for that. I want to know more about my dad's condition. But that doesn't mean I don't trust you to take care of him. Those are two different things. <sighs> Fine, honey. I'll give you Dr. Brown's contact. But don't worry too much. As I said, me and Dr. Brown have everything under control. Zoe, honey, I feel as though I've been stabbed by a hundred knives in my heart. I cannot believe it happened so quickly. What is it, Eden? Is it, is it about my dad? Yes, darling. Henry passed away peacefully in his sleep. This morning, when I entered his room, I noticed that he was no longer breathing. I immediately called Dr. Brown, who arrived shortly thereafter and conducted a thorough examination. He confirmed that your father had no signs of life. I am so sorry for your loss, Zoe. I know how you must be feeling at the moment, and I am feeling the same way. Oh, father. So this day has finally come. I really don't know what to say right now, other than thanking you for being by my dad's side during his last days of living. This is an extremely heartbreaking situation and none of us would have wished for this. I understand that this is a difficult time for you and I want to assure you that I have already taken care of the funeral arrangements. Your father's funeral will be held at his mansion within one week. It'll be a discreet one among family members, just as your father's will. I will inform you of the exact date and time as soon as it's finalized. I got it. Thank you for taking care of everything. I seriously don't know what to do without you. Did father did father leave any parting words for you before he passed away? Henry was a thoughtful and prudent man, as you know. He had already carefully planned everything, including who would inherit his estate. According to his will, I, his legal wife, will be the sole beneficiary of his belongings and financial assets. This decision is clearly stated in his testament, and I am confident that you will not contest it. I'm sorry, Zoe, but you will not receive a single penny from your father. I find it weird that he didn't leave me anything in his will. I'm his daughter, and he loves me just as much as he loves you. He even hid his illness from me to protect me. I don't think he would have left me out of his will on purpose. Zoe, just accept that you no longer have a place in Henry's heart. I have been his primary caregiver for many years and he has come to rely on me more than on you. You may not realize it, but the bond between you and Henry has weakened over time. In fact, he may have stopped caring for you altogether. That is why he decided to leave me all of his assets. He knew that I am the person who deserves them the most. No, it's simply not true what you said. My father's love for me has never diminished. Even after my mother's death, the last time we saw each other, he treated me with the same warmth and kindness that he always has. I can confidently state that my father's love for me is unwavering and everlasting. You may continue to cling to 
to your delusion about your father. But you cannot deny the fact that I am the rightful heir to Henry's vast fortune. If you have any objections to your father's will, you are welcome to come to my house and I will show you the testament that he personally wrote. I am confident that you will be able to identify his handwriting and signature very quickly. Admit it, Zoe. Now, you're nothing more than a pitiful and abject failure. And me, after all those years of enduring that disgusting old man, I can finally achieve my goal to acquire his fortune and a lot of it. What? What do you mean? Are you implying that you married my father solely for his wealth? I find your old father so disgusting that I have to hold back from throwing up every time I have to sleep with him. Do you really think that a beautiful young woman like me would be with your father because I loved him? That's the most ridiculous joke I've ever heard in my entire life. What? So you're saying that... All of the years you spent caring for my father were nothing more than a calculated and deceitful ploy to gain control of his vast fortune? I was totally convinced that your words and actions were genuine. I believed that you were truly committed to watching over my father's well-being. Oh, honey. These sorts of performances are child's play for me. You believed that I was caring for your father? But the reality is that the maids were doing all the work for me. I simply gave them some money to keep them quiet so that I could take all the credit. You must be surprised by my intellect. Am I correct? I am curious to know who else could possess both intelligence and beauty like me. Eden, you're a person of astonishing shamelessness, greed, and despicable deception. I never imagined that you would be the kind of person. I believe that you truly cared for my father and that your intentions were genuine. The thought of how you pretended to be nice to me and my dad makes me shiver. And by the way, sorry that I got you kicked out of the house. I would be surprised if you didn't miss the days when you lived in your father's grand mansion. Now that you've been reduced to living in a tiny rented house. I can only imagine how cramped and uncomfortable it must be for you after being accustomed to such luxury. Well, it is a life that you have earned. One that is fitting for a little brat like you. What? You were the one who orchestrated my being kicked out of the house? Who else could it have been? You were angry at your father for not letting you go out with your bad friends. So I took advantage of the situation and snuck into your father's workroom and burned his important documents to ashes. Afterwards, I took your father's phone and texted you to come into the room. Hardly had you stepped foot into the room when your father came in, catching you red-handed in the midst of the compelling crime scene. Now that I think about it, I still can't understand why my father was so certain that my friends were delinquents. It was you who planted those ideas in his head, wasn't it? Oh, I thought that someone as dull as you wouldn't be able to grasp the situation so quickly. But bingo, you got that right. Prior to that, you were also involved in a number of other incidents such as stealing your father's money, throwing away your father's wedding ring, or destroying his wedding photos with me. Of course, all of these troubles were orchestrated by me. And they, along with the incident in which your father's documents were burned, are more than enough reasons for you to be excluded from the house. You were the one behind all of this? I cannot believe that I was so foolish not to see it. To think that I felt indebted to you for defending me against my father. When in reality, it was all just an act. Your character is so loathsome that I am ashamed to have ever associated with you. A wicked witch like you will not get away with your sins. You may blame me all you want, but it will not change the reality that your father gave me all of his inheritance, leaving you completely penniless. Do not be too sour, Zoe. Perhaps if you alter your conduct, I would consider giving you a chance to work as a maid in my home. <laughs> Zoe, I never imagined that you could be so embittered as to not even attend your own father's funeral. I am deeply disappointed in you, Zoe. What kind of daughter are you? I was about to ask you that very question, Eden. What sort of stepmother are you to commit such a heinous act? What sort of thing are you implying, Zoe? Are you still holding a grudge against me for not getting your hands on your father's fortune? If I'm not mistaken, you're simply sitting at home plotting some evil scheme to 
regain your father's inheritance. Are you not? Well, sorry to say, but that won't be easy, Zoe. You know very clearly that I am the rightful owner of your father's legacy. You even saw with your own eyes your father's testament and you can't even deny that it is your father's own handwriting. Eden, I would not be so arrogant if I were you. In fact, I suggest that you prepare to face your worst nightmare for the vile crime that you committed against my father. What crime are you referring to? Are you perhaps fantasizing? Fantasizing again? Don't attempt to deceive me with your pretense of innocence. I know everything. You coerced my father into signing a will that leaves all of his assets to you. Your boyfriend held a gun to his head while he was signing the document. Subsequently, you could find my father and Dr. Davis in the basement to prevent anyone from ever learning of your wrongdoing. What boyfriend? Seriously, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. Your father is dead. Stop deceiving yourself into believing that he's still alive. It's ridiculous, you know that. If you had attended the funeral, you would have seen your father's body in the coffin, but you declined to do so. Please, Eden, stop pretending. I know everything about your evil plan to hurt my father and steal his money. In fact, Dr. Brown is actually your boyfriend, Scott. He has assumed the identity of Dr. Brown in order to stay close to you. If I'm not mistaken, you had intended to marry him had things gone according to your initial plans. What? Don't just level such an accusation against me without any proof to support it. Do you seriously believe that I will allow you to continue defaming me in this manner? I'm calling the police. How dare you deny your crime and ask for evidence? My father and Dr. Davis are the living proof of your wrongdoing. I found them tied up in the basement of my father's mansion and I was able to free them. The police will soon find out about you and Scott's crime of kidnapping. You should prepare for that. It's useless to deny it because Scott has already confessed. <gasps> How could he have been so foolish? I refuse to believe it. Don't try to trick me. I won't fall for it. There's no way that Scott would admit everything. I suspected something was wrong from the start. So I asked Dr. Brown for my father's medical records. I found out that he prescribed the drug that my dad was allergic to, which only me and Dr. Davis knew about. I investigated and found out that Dr. Brown is a fraud with no medical knowledge. He eventually pleaded guilty to his crimes and said that you were his accomplice. What? How could Scott be so stupid to commit that simple mistake? I knew that I could never put my trust in that useless man. Don't just blame your boyfriend for your plan failing. You also messed up. I think you thought I would go to my dad's funeral so you left the house unguarded. That gave me the perfect chance to sneak in and rescue my dad and Dr. Davis from the basement. No! It's unbelievable that someone as dull as you could have figured out my plan so easily. I... I cannot believe any of this. Eden, you are a liar and a cheat. You pretended to be a good wife and caregiver to my father. But you were actually having an affair with Scott. Dr. Davis found out about your affair with Scott and told my father. You and Scott were scared. So you attacked them and locked both Dr. Davis and my father in the basement. No, please stop talking. I've heard enough, I've heard enough. In a subsequent act of desperation, you and Scott devised a meticulously crafted scheme to conceal your crime. You claimed that my father was seriously ill and even faked his funeral in an attempt to throw off suspicion. The figure that lies in the coffin is not my dad's corpse but a wax effigy that has been crafted with painstaking precision. Furthermore, I also found out that you hadn't even informed the state about my father's death. So there's no way that my father's death was real. Oh no, I can't believe I figured it out loud. Please do not turn me into the authorities. I didn't want to do what I did, but your father left me no choice. He threatened to disinherit me and leave everything to you. I was afraid of having to give up the lifestyle that was funded by wealth and privilege, which I had been enjoying all the time. What could I do in that situation? Henry forced my hand. It was not my fault. I would do anything to make it up to you and your father. I would go away and never bother you again. I, I would give up everything I've just to be forgiven. Please, I'm begging you. Don't call the police. I'm not a bad person. I was just trying to survive. Please give me another chance. 
after the dreadful crimes you committed, now you would still dare to claim that you are not a bad person? Your actions against my father were utterly unforgivable and you deserve the most severe punishments. The police are already on their way to arrest you. And don't even think for a moment that you will be able to escape justice. After a lengthy investigation, the police finally apprehended Eden and her lover, Scott, for their heinous crimes of illegal captivity and fraud. The two were subsequently tried and convicted, and each sentenced to seven years in prison. This sentence is a just and fitting punishment for their cruel and unscrupulous actions. Upon being liberated from their imprisonment, my father and Dr. Davis showered me with praise for my keenness in solving the case. My father also expressed his regret for not heeding my counsel in the first instance and forcing me to move out of his house. He then extended an invitation for me and my spouse to relocate to the mansion and reside with him. Ultimately, it was not my father who was at fault for the events that transpired. Rather, it was my wicked stepmother who was having an extramarital affair and subsequently devised a plan to seize my father's fortune. In the end, just this was served. Although what happened to my father and me was disheartening, it also served to strengthen our bond as father and daughter. It is always essential to never give up on the people we care about and to be willing to open our hearts when they offer us a sincere apology for the mistakes they made in the past.